I have two legs here, one front and one back, and I'm gonna cut them different. One I'm gonna cut along the top and one I'm gonna cut along the bottom. So I'm gonna do this one from the upper side. Helps to have a sharp knife. Now when you get down here, you can see the toe splits. So this becomes somewhat difficult. So what I did is I cut the toe splits right here and I cut along this toe and along this toe. So you have to make a sort of a Y right there. Now if all you're doing is removing the sinew, then you can just kind of tear this skin off really fast and you know nothing really matters. But if you're trying to save it, you need to with it, or have to do a little bit of tricky skinning down in here. So once you get it started, we should be able to just pull most of it off. I'm just gonna make a couple cuts here at the top to get it so I can grab it. Then I'm gonna put my knife down and just start pulling. Once I can get a good hold of it, see what I mean? But now the fun starts because we have to skin out all of these folds and stuff. So just pull off everything you can. Just keep pulling. Get your thumb in there. And then as soon as you have to, but not sooner, start to cut. And just be really careful not to cut the skin. Now down at this joint, there's um, a bone inside of here, but you just want to skin it out all the way down here and then we'll cut it and leave that last little triangular shaped bone in here. We'll, we'll get to that, you'll see what I mean. And over here, Do what you can with your fingers. The more you use the knife, the more likely you are to leave cuts in the skin. And you really want to get this down pretty far. Go all the way down to the hooves. And then I'm going to start skinning along the edge of the hoof right here. And again over here with the dew claw, I just want to skin right up to the edge of that hoof. Very close. Okay, we're doing good there. So I just need to skin, cut this along this edge of the hoof. Again, just like the other side. Okay. Now, I'm up to the edge of the dew claw, right up there, and I can find that last joint. There's two joints. There's one right here, way out here, but there's one that's almost inside the hoof a little bit. So that's the one you want, preferably. So really get Get in there with the tip of your knife and find that joint. There it is.
That way we're going to leave the minimum amount of, you know, stuff. Will just be that little triangular bone is all that will be left inside the hoof. Some people have a lot of patience for this kind of work, others don't. Honestly, I don't. <laughs> Some people love it. They just love sitting there picking the thing apart and seeing how it's put together. Hopefully you're one of those people. Okay, we're just gonna get this one done again. Trying to find that joint way down inside the, the dew claw. These flies are annoying. It's September, there's a lot of flies in September. They're frantic because they're gonna die soon. It's their last last buzz. Okay, so I just pulled on that. We got it skinned down the rest of the way to the hoof right here. And then we just have to finish this cut all the way around the edge of the hoof. You really want to get as much skin as you can because if you're going to use these for any kind of sewing project like a bag or something, it's just really easy to, if you don't have all the skin that you can get out of it, um, you may just not have enough to make the seams that you want to make. There's barely enough room to pull anything off, really. So take your time to get right up against that hoof and get as much skin as you can. I'm just gonna come in from the top here. Uh oh, I'm getting impatient. And there you go. If you wanted to make like a, something out of this, a bag or something, then the hooves will be here. And the next one we're gonna skin so the hooves are on the outside. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, we're gonna do another one going this way. Just gonna pull this off get up close to the dew claws, cut the bone off inside the dew claw, just like we did with the other one. You don't need to see me do all that. So in this case, I just cut all the way down. It doesn't really form the same, quite the same type of Y here on the bottom. <clears throat> so it just means we're gonna have to approach this slightly different. Um, I've got the dew claws free from the bones and pull this all the way down you have to skin this real close now this here is actually a gland that emits a scent when the deer steps on the ground that's interesting huh like you'd think that that would be bad because it leaves like a scent that predators can pick up and literally if you see a buck walking away you can run up and sometimes you can smell that in the fresh track try it sometime <clears throat> but apparently it works more as a way for them to communicate that's more important than you know the disadvantage of making it easier for predators to find them i guess I mean, if I can smell it, a predator can probably smell it 10 feet away. But I have to put my nose right in the track. I'm just gonna stretch this out into its natural shape. And then trim it off. Flush.
So there's the difference. Let's go tack these out to dry. There's the difference there. I much prefer this and I don't usually do them this way. <clears throat> you really want to go out of your way to do this evenly and get the nails right out the edge so you have plenty of skin to work with if you have to cut those holes off later, which you may or may not have to, but. Okay, so I'm gonna tap that in and I'm gonna pull it a little bit. Then I'm gonna tap this one in, same way, just right on the edge. And then I'm gonna pull it out. Try to make it similar. And when you're doing this with hawk skins, it pays to uh, put in quite a few nails. You know, don't, don't skimp too much on the nails. And we're just going to use it, this one's just going to be rawhide. So it won't change shape when you're using it, right? I mean, it's just going to be stiff. So you have to get it in the shape you want it now, is what I'm getting at. That means you want, you want this even, you don't want it like skewed like that or anything. You can see there's just some of these tendon things here. You can get try to get those off later if you want to, or you can just pull them off, but typically I don't do anything. When I take them off, I just nail them out and dry them. Although uh, sprinkling a borax doesn't hurt. That'll keep bugs out. Because you will get um, moths and beetles trying to eat this. Good. Do not drive these nails in too deep. They don't need to be deep. In fact, you want to be able to take them out pretty easy. So, just a little bit. That's it. Let that dry. So, this is dry. And since I put the nails in real lightly, all I have to do is kind of wiggle them to loosen them, pop them out. There we go. There's still a little moisture it looks like in here. That's unfortunate. So I'm probably actually going to tack this back out and make sure that gets dry because it could change shape, you know, and I want it to stay flat. Not a big deal though. So I'll just retack that out over here in a different spot. Probably won't even put all the nails back, just a few of them to keep that flat while it finishes drying. Now, if you go to make anything with these, you'll find that it's very nice to have matched pairs. When you look at deer walking around in the woods, they all probably look the same to you, but they aren't. They're very different. The coloration is a lot different. So the deer standing next to this one is gonna have you know different looking hawk skins. So you wanna save these in pairs. Also, you probably, if you wanna make something, you'll probably need at least four of them, like say if you're gonna make a bag, so you're gonna need uh, the same two. Probably you're gonna want like two sets of front legs. Um, so that means you have to have two different deer. And they're not always that nice. Sometimes you get one that's just scruffy, like these are all messed up looking. So, you know, a pair of these that are matched and in good condition are somewhat valuable and you can just stash them away for later use. Now, I didn't flush this at all. There's a little bit of uh, tissue and sometimes there'll be little tendons and stuff on here. Um, you can flush it a little if you want beforehand, but be careful because if you apply too much pressure, you could start to slip the hair out and you'll lose some of the hair. So I usually don't do much of anything. There's no flush, there's no um, fat usually. So it's just like, it's a section of a deer that really doesn't have any muscles. So it's just a few tendons and stuff. A sprinkling of borax doesn't hurt. That'll keep bugs off because um, beetles and moths will actually eat the skin 
if they get into it rawhide like this it's not tanned it's not smoked you know there's nothing really preserving it so it's food for those guys and just a light sprinkling of borax on the flush side you know kind of rub it in and then tack it out to dry that works to keep bugs off so if you're making glue with these which they make very good glue you can just take the knife slide it down the top here get it started pull it off down to here and then just cut it off and let it dry and you end up with something like this which is is fine for glue you don't have to tack it out or anything just toss them out in the sun and let them dry you can cut these into a spiral like you cut it into a spiral strip like this and you can make a long piece of cord out of it to use for a bow drill fire kit or whatever so that's pretty neat i've never done it but uh it's a neat idea i want to try that I've also seen people use these as wrist guards for archery. So when you shoot a bow, sometimes the string will slap you in the wrist. And it hurts bad enough when it happens one time, but if it happens over and over again, it can really be un not fun. So I've seen people use the hawk skin, um, not with the hooves, I'm not sure how well that would work, but uh, laced on here as a string guard.